to my heart. Holy Spirit, message of love to encourage me. Lifting my heart from despair, how you love me and care for me. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart. Give me a holy word. If I can hear from you, then I know what to do. I won't go alone. Never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide me and let your word abide. Speak to my heart. Praise the Lord, uh, church. We are so glad to have you this morning at our uh, worship online. This is Jerusalem Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church. So glad you're here in Jesus' name, where we are building believers together. Just a few housekeeping announcements this morning. Please don't forget that you can, those that are calling in can mute your phone um, and you would do a, a pound six or uh, yeah, pound six to unmute and pound six to mute again. Um, if there are two or more of you in the same household, same space, and you each have dialed in or uh, each have, have connected in to this service, please mute your phones uh, so that it would help, help to uh, reduce the amount of uh, uh, feedback that we get during the service. So we thank you so much in advance. Uh, at this time, we ask that uh, Brother uh, Alwyn, if you're online, if you would lead us in our announcements. Uh, our announcements are as follows. Uh, please keep in mind, please keep Denise and Carlton Jackson in your prayers. Um, we learned that their brother-in-law, Gene Battle, Battle, lost his life on Wednesday, April 22nd. And also keep his widow, Jane, in your prayers as well. Tuesday night Bible study will be on April 28th at 6.30 p.m. using the Zoom information uh, with a call-in number for Zoom. The Zoom Youth Sunday School will happen at noon today. Uh, email Bonita Walker at Bonita, Bonita, Eno, Bonita Noah, uh, Noah's Ark Rep at gmail.com after this service and she will send you the information, the invitation to join. Also coming soon, we have the uh, Sight and Sound Theater outgoing. It has been rescheduled and uh, will occur on Friday, October 9th, 2020. Please see Ms. Doris Plater for more information. Uh, the Spring Rally will be on Sunday, May 31st, 2020. Uh, look towards Look forward to your team captain um, in 
to be in contact with you soon, and a notification will also be sent uh, by mail. Our 185th church anniversary celebration will be held at a later date in the year. A conference call will be set up this week for planning. See Henrietta Jenkins for more information. Thank you so much, uh, Alwyn. Uh, please join uh, me for a word of um, Please join me for a word of prayer this time. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Lord, we thank you for this Sunday morning we've yet to even experience in full. But right now, Lord, we thank you for being to get able to come together and being able to connect through these virtual waves. Lord, may something that is sung, something that is said, something that is spoken, something that is preached, oh God, resolve in our hearts this morning that we can run on a little while longer to remind ourselves that God you are still with us so right now God settle us settle our spirits that we may be open and fully present in this worship experience not for ourselves not just for for show God but for ourselves that we may be nourished through your spiritual word that we can go and tell a dying world that you still live as we continue to move about this space despite a pandemic. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We ask now for Brother Terry and uh, Teresa to lead us in worship.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Our, uh, instead of doing a um, reach out at this point for prayers, we will just do a general prayer for this morning. Um, won't you pray with me? Eternal God, we again are so glad to be present with you. Although we are not in a sanctuary space, oh God, may our hearts be, hearts and homes be our sanctuary this morning. That we could love you in spirit and in truth, that we have settled down from the ways of the world and the things of the world, oh God, that we may focus and center our time, carve out this time for you, God. Be with us, oh Lord, in this moment, in this space, and in these places uh, across the world and across the country, oh God, that you still are high, looking low. We ask, Lord, that you continue to bless and keep us, oh God, as we move through this season, uh, one we've never seen before. In spite of that, Lord, work on our spiritual relationship with you. Amen. That in the midst of where we are and what we're, what's going on across the world, let us not consume all of the things and all of the negative things and all of the negative social media and all of those things around the world, oh God. But let us continue to seek your light, seek your peace, seek your love and grow in this moment and in this time. Thank you, Lord, for the time out that we may have, sl- uh, that our schedules may have slowed down just a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's a, a special prayer, oh God, for those who are grieving this morning, uh, for the Jackson family, for the Battle family, for um, the Curry family, for uh, the Crutchfield family, for all of those, uh, and the list can, t- can continue to go on as folks have lost their lives to COVID as well as to just natural causes. Lord, you know what they are standing in the need of, oh God, be a hedge of protection around them, Lord, as they, they uh, work through their grief in this moment. Don't deny the grief, but work through the grief, oh God, because that is what is most healthy in this season and for our lives. Lord, give us a sense of peace and a sense of understanding, oh God, that you still are worthy to be praised. Uh, we wrote, uh, your son Jesus Christ rose just weeks ago. And in that resurrection moment, oh God, let us continue to uh, be resurrected and revived, oh God, in, in our spirit, in our walk, in our talk, in our understanding of you, in our nurturing of you. Uh, Lord, work on our hearts. Give us clean hearts and right spirits, oh God, that we may be focused and centered on you. Not just for now but for in all things and in all ways and in all places, we give you thanks. Thank you for the the gift of uh, friends and family who've come online to join us this morning. Lord, bless their lives and bless their locations and bless their spaces, oh God. Uh, May may you, God, continue to reach uh, beyond our our reach through our own hands. It's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So now we want to do something a little different. Uh, one with something we hadn't done before. And this is going to be a virtual passing of the peace. Yes, that's right. Virtual passing of the peace. Well, how do I want this to work? Well, let's, we're going to try it, okay? We're going to unmute all of the lines. And this is a perfect time for you to reach across and open up your mouths and wave for those that are on cameras at, at our neighbors and friends and, and family uh, from the church just to say, hey, how you doing? If you haven't picked up the phone individually, at the time. So let's open up the lines at this point so we can say hello to our friends. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. 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 Good morning, everyone. I just want to say good morning. um, Today's my birthday, so I'm pretty excited. Now, whose voice was that? Was that Kyla? It's Kyla, yes. Birthday, Kyla. 
Thank you. 27. And I'm very blessed to be able to be on the line with you guys. Good morning, everyone. This is Good morning. My birthday is on the 29th of Wednesday. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right. You know how that works? Joining in our, spirit, our virtual pastor will now have uh, Alwyn to come forward with the reading of our scripture. Good morning, everyone. Again, our scripture this less this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Saint Luke, and I'll be reading Saint Luke chapter twenty-four, verse thirteen through thirty-five, on the road to Emmaus. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Amir, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked among them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and all the rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was one who was going to redeem Israel, and that. And what's more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not did not the Messiah have to suffer these things? Did not the Messiah have to suffer these did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went to stay with them. When he was, he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two, then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. We'll now have a musical selection Father, 
help your children. Don't let them fall outside the road. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for your, your ministry of music this morning. For a few moments of our time today, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach what to do along a path. What to do along the path. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, what to do along the path, or also known as I'd like to uh, use, if I had, could retag it in a vernacular, I mean, in a uh, more um, contemporary version, let's take a long walk. Let's take a long walk. Somebody will get that when they get home. Uh, today's message is for a familiar one because it is along the road of Damascus. I'm excuse me, the road of Emmaus. Excuse me. Uh, now, don't tune out just yet, but please tune in because, after all, God is still working on me just like God is working on you. And so, there's so much to learn, so much to go as we sojourn together in this text to gain scriptural understanding and applicability to our lives. Can I get an amen? Cleophas and another disciple were featured in our pericope, are featured in our pericope today as they were traveling from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a seven mile journey. Now for them, mind you that they are not in a car, 
along this seven mile journey, but they're, they're walking along this seven mile journey. So you know a walk is gonna take a lot longer than it would if they were driving their cars, amen? For them, it is midday, and I would imagine that they are perplexed as to the next chapters of their lives. You see, they had just seen Jesus uh, praised on Sunday uh, with singing shouts of Hosanna. And then he was uh, beaten and crucified and even buried. And now he is not around. So for them, they are trying to figure out, how do I get my life back together again? How do I get all of what used to be normal that is no longer normal back together again? Where do I go? What do I do? And for them, they wonder if they should be returning to go catch fish uh, using those nets that, we, that we've all heard about, or whether they go back to collecting taxes uh, and, and the like, for, is, for, for that is what they were doing before they left to go follow Jesus. See, they were hanging out with Jesus so long, they almost forgot who they used to be. And it is in this moment, or what they used to do, and it is in this moment that we are, uh, we see them as they are there and they are not sure where to go or what to do. Even for us, if we could open the front door of Jerusalem Mount Pleasant today and peek into the sanctuary, we see a lot of we see a sanctuary full of empty pews this morning. How do we move through not just coming together to be in fellowship with one another uh, or through the virtual means, but you know, when we first started this, we wondered what would church look like for us? How would we worship? How would we stay connected? How would we pray together? And how would we stay together? But we found ways and out of no ways and in the middle of it all, God is with us even through these steps and even through these moments and even through these seasons. So no matter what it looks like, and even if we haven't been to church for a while, God is still with us even in these moments. In comparison to the two disciples, um, we look at what the pandemic did to us from Easter and Palm Sunday and how we will wave imaginary branches and even saying Hosanna in the highest. And even with Easter, we saw that we would say that Christ is risen today and we returned, not three days later, but to a live stream, to telework, to social distancing to masks, and the list goes on and on. But has our human condition returned us to getting through? If I can just get through this, everything will be all right. Or has our human condition returned us to stopping to find the ways that God in our midst, is God is still in our midst, and we can still sing Emmanuel, God is with us. I moved on, I moved to a season of accepting what is going on. And as my wife and I go out and take pictures along our, our walks, I find that there are blooms. Flowers are blooming and the trees are blooming. And in those blooms, I stopped to take pictures because I wanted to remember those moments. I wanted to stop along our walk, along our journey to remember these moments of God's presence in our midst that he created the heaven and the earth. And if he created the heavens and the earth, then he created the flowers that are blooming even in a spring and even in a pandemic. Everybody can't go see cherry blossoms, but I, I thought that I would capture cherry blossoms along our walk. Isn't it interesting to see that God is still blessing us? God is still with us even through this pandemic, but we have to still take care of ourselves, take care of ourselves both physically and spiritually. Along this way, my brothers and sisters, the feedback that I've gotten as I posted my pictures on social media, not for me, because initially it was for me, but I posted them because I felt like I should share what I saw along my way because there's somebody, maybe somebody that may be dealing with snow today but it is in these moments that I got feedback from folks that it offered that the encouraging, this was an encouraging word for them and it brought them happiness and put them in a happy place. 
reminding us that God is with us. Cleophas and the other disciple may have processed this, uh, this season that, that they're in only as a death experience, a death moment, but they speak death, but there is no mention of the prophecies that Jesus had articulated as he reminded them that he's going to be taken up into heaven one day soon. Somewhere along the path, though, uh, along this path to Emmaus, they encounter Jesus, but do not recognize him as his true identity is being withheld. But have you ever withheld your identity? Have you even muted your phone? Or if somebody says, is that you, Tanya? And you didn't even answer? Suppose Jesus did that to you. Suppose Jesus ghosted you. Jesus must have had a motive in this moment. His motive may have been that he had, this reminds me a lot of how Mary got, when she came to see Jesus at the tomb, she mistook him for a gardener. Again, she didn't recognize Jesus. But the two disciples, however, are before Jesus. And if, they, if he had given away his identity, would it have lessened his teaching in that moment along that dusty road to Emmaus? If he had given away his identity as the gardener, would it have lessened his identity of who he was in that moment? Because remember, Jesus disappeared and now disappeared from the tomb. And now, as far as they could comprehend, they couldn't find him. In that moment, the disciples are met with Jesus asking them a question a question that would rock their boats, a question that would move them from complacency to wonder what in the world is going on. Didn't you hear? Where have you been? Didn't you get the news? He simply says in verse 17, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? Brothers and sisters, what are we discussing as we walk along this journey? this longer than seven mile journey, this day in and day out journey, this journey that seems to be wanting to never end, that even though that the, the, the beaches are open and that some states have released the uh, lockdown orders, there's still some wisdom to be learned in this moment, that God is still with us, but then God also gives us wisdom and grace and mercy through all of these seasons. And so if you don't feel still uncomfortable, still comfortable going to beaches and all these places, then why don't we take a time out from ourselves? What are you discussing along this season? The goodness of the Lord is unconceivable. That is grace abounds through all that we seem to do and say that I thought I wouldn't make it. I thought I wouldn't make it in this season, in this time, but I'm finding that I can find rest in the Lord, that his word would speak words to me when I didn't have any words to say that the, the word of God is still speaking to me day in and day out, no matter where I go and what I do, that the Lord is still with me. It's interesting of the response of the two. Jesus asked the question and they stand still, wondering in this conversation what God is up to. You see, their horizontal perspective only had them in a human condition. And it is assumed that God is looking down on them from above. But when our vertical condition is focused on God and our human condition is focused on the people around us and our neighbors as we love thy neighbor, as we love ourselves, then we begin to be in right relationships and at this crossroads where we can be still. Now in this moment of stillness, it is our opportunity to not give up on God, to not give up on Jesus to not lose hope and lose sight of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
But no, to cling on, to hold on to God's unchanging hand, to know that the word of God will be, me, be with me in these moments, that I can be still, that I can be recharged, that I can be refueled, that I can be renewed. You see, this path that they were on caused them to stop and to consider what it means to be in relationship with Christ when Christ isn't present in the natural. See, they had to now figure out what their relationship would look like in this moment and in this space because Christ was no longer with them in the natural. See, they, they watched him heal and deliver and set free and walk on water and all these things. And now he's not in front of them. So now how would they change their relationship? Would they go back to business as usual? Will we go back to business as usual or will we stop in this stillness, in this moment, in this season of being still and remember that Christ is all? He's everything to me. Christ is all. He rules the land and sea. Christ is all. Without him, nothing can be. Christ is all, all in all this world to me. It's interesting that this is midday and, and as the day goes on and they're still talking along this road that they come to a point where they offer and invite Christ to come in and to hang out with them, although they still don't know it's Jesus. And in that meal where he took the bread and he took the juice, symbolizing means of grace or communion, we find that we see them all of a sudden layers upon layers of their blindness that are now becoming sight, and then they see. You see, they go and they tell a story that did not our hearts burn as to what all that Christ had done in their midst because their eyes had been opened up to them because the scripture spoke to them. Their eyes were now open to them their eyes of who Jesus was was now open to them because the scripture had spoken to them. Never underestimate what scripture can do, what God's word can do, how it can heal your soul, how it can revive your life, how it can get you to go on a little while longer to see what the end is going to be. My brothers and sisters, this is a journey that we're on. This seven mile journey that they were on. The disciples we're following Jesus, and they have been called to follow Jesus, and we have been called as believers in Jesus Christ to follow Jesus no matter to the ends of the age, that when he comes again, song says, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I want, will you be ready when Jesus comes, my brothers and sisters, even in the stillness of this moment? Will you be ready, my brothers and sisters? When the pandemic has gone away, when, the re, re, uh, when all of the restrictions have been lifted, will you be ready when Jesus comes back again and says, I've come for you, my brother and sister, but you don't know me. There's still time. No matter whether we met Jesus along a road to Emmaus, my brothers and sisters, when is it time for people to walk to Emmaus? I'd offer that the time is now. There's always a good time to return back to Emmaus because in that moment, in this time, we find a connection to Christ yet once again, that we thought we were following Christ and doing the things of Christ. And I didn't have to see Christ for myself to know that I believed, but it was something on the inside, working on the outside, brought about a change in my life. Maybe you remember when you first met Jesus for yourself, where, where were you when you said yes to Christ? My brothers and sisters, 
don't miss the moment for the Messiah. Don't miss this moment of being still that your connection with Christ can be strengthened and renewed and we could run on a little while longer to tell a dying world to spread the gospel, to spread the ministry. Maybe it's not that we are going to be on TV to spread the ministry, but it's in those small moments where we call our neighbor and say, I picked up an extra roll of toilet paper for you. I'm going to drop it off on your doorstep and I'll call you when I get close. Maybe it's that we are just reaching out across the street to say, meet me on the curb, meet me on the front porch so we can just wave because I miss seeing people. I love my wife, but I miss seeing my wife and uh, seeing other people in this moment and in this time. My neighbors across the street and I, and this is, I'll close this way. My neighbors and I were across the street and we hadn't seen each other in weeks, but we were passing by each other. And finally, we were both in the cars. We were car to car. And we looked across and we waved and then we laughed. Because in the midst of all of this, we had to remind ourselves that Jesus is love and that we shall too get through this together. My brothers and sisters, in the still moments, Jesus is asking us, what are we going to do along this path that we can still be renewed as we look to our neighbors? as we look to our communities, as we look to Jesus for hope to help heal the land. My prayers are with you this morning. I hope that you're praying also that this will soon pass. Amen. Thank you for walking with me along this path, uh, along this uh, story of Jim, uh, Emmaus. Can't, say, can't get it right. But today we have to ask a question through invitation as to if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If by chance in this still moment you have never said yes to Jesus, I offer you an invitation to Christ. I offer Christ to you, my brother, and to my sister that even though we are virtual, we still can have a conversation. So what I'd ask you to do was either to leave a message in the chat or if, you are, or if you're online, but if you're calling in, send me an email to jmp1umc at aol.com and your contact information so I can reach out to you so we can discuss the next steps of your journey, your faithful journey and you accepting Jesus Christ. Thanks to all who have uh, given thus far in this season of social distancing. Uh, we encourage you to give at this time of your tithes and offerings, even now as the bills and ministry need to go forth. Uh, please do your best. Remember also that there are three ways to give, um, three ways to give in this offering um, through, through, uh, through giving by mail. Our address is uh, 21 Wood Lane, Rockville, Maryland, 20850. Um, checks and money orders are definitely accepted. Um, we ask that the, the finances ask me, of course, again, that if you have uh, put the cash aside, as I was alluding to, in an envelope, that you can convert that to a check and to send that forward, because uh, we are in this uh, for a little while longer. Amen. And also, uh, our third way of giving is by Givelify. That's online giving. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Uh, download the app to your device. Uh, and then once downloaded, search for Jerusalem Mount Pleasant. And there'll be a button that you can just give. And it'll be easy as one, two, three. Amen? And then there's also a fourth way uh, through recurring giving. Some of you give on uh, pay or pay your bills online. Well, just may, set up a, a payment plan kind of thing for Jerusalem Mount Pleasant. Put the address in, and you can send your uh, gift electronically, and we'll get it in the mail just like we would get a regular check. So those are all of our options for giving. 
uh, let us pray for our offering. Oh, Lord, our Lord, we thank you for this offering. For those that have to give and those that would like to give, oh, God, we thank you for these gifts. May they be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just a few final thoughts. Um, you saw in your, uh, for those that are online in the group chat, um, we, uh, Benita has, uh, has been included. Uh, Benita Noah's Art Rep at gmail.com is the uh, address that you'll email to get the uh, link for today's Zoom Sunday School for our youth. Uh, it's been going well, and so thankful that the ministry team has decided to keep it going during, even during this season. So we praise God it'll be happening every week. Uh, also, please tell a neighbor or friend that that is going on and kind of forward that link on uh, for them. Also want to uh, keep in mind of our sick and shut-in that are on our list. Um, Sister Lillian Baker, uh, Sister Martha Carter, Sister Nina Clark, Sister Sharon Duffin, Sister Barbara Frazier, Brother uh, Art Hall, and I believe Jean Hall, um, uh, Sister Robin Jackson, Sister Jean Johnson, Sister Christy McCroy, um, Brother Lewis Rhodes, and Sister Lennis Washington. Uh, at this time, we will um, do a roll call. Um, we're going to unmute the phones again, but please be reminded that if uh, there are two people uh, in dev with devices on in the same space, one might be on the phone and one might be on the computer, please um, know that we shall get some uh, feedback. So try to mute and maybe one person say who's in the room um, and we'll go from them. And we also like to thank our visitors for joining us uh, at this time. Uh, in which ways we can uh, come together again. We did hear that the, uh, the uh, governor has mentioned that there may be room for uh, gathering again in outdoor spaces. Um, this is a probably, it's, it's a warm time, a pretty pretty warm time right now. So we'll figure out how we can do that. Um, if that uh, is amenable to the, uh, to the church, we'll get with the trustees and the uh, uh, church council to figure out how we might still be in worship and possibly be in worship um, in an open space, outdoor, outdoor space. Uh, but we still haven't gotten all the guidelines yet, but we definitely wanna make sure that you're safe, everything is taken care of, that we've done the proper distancing and all those other requirements uh, for when we do come back. And then even also that, looking at how we can come back into the sanctuary and still be uh, together again. Um, don't forget we have a, a we, um, to reach out to those that are not on our line, either on the phone or um, through uh, cal uh, com computers, uh, please, uh, through devices, please reach out to them as you move along about the week. Um, if you want to forward them the announcements that happen weekly, you can always drop it in the mail to those who do not have email. Uh, please let me know and we'll be able to do that. So thanks so much. So let us look to the Lord um, for dismissal. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name. We thank you, Lord, for all the ways in which you've been with us on today. We ask right now, Lord, you continue to watch over us and guide us as we move from this space, never from your presence, reminding us that it is a journey and not a sprint, that you are still in the blessing business and our spiritual selves are just as important as our physical selves. So Lord, watch over us and keep us until we see each other again or be with each other again. It's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Don't forget, have a great week on purpose. Brother Marshall, you want to close this out? Oh. Oh. Amen. Have a great week on purpose.